Okay, looks like we're streaming live now. Um, we live. Hello, everybody. Tonight, I'm uh, with Ask the New Guy. I've got Cameron Peterson from the Fresh and Lean Progressive Yamaha Racing Team. What's up, Cam P? And yes, that is a mouthful. I'm not, I know. I better stop practicing as well. <laughs> Well, I, I only got it because like I you know I did the thing with Richard last night. Right, right. <laughs> no, but thanks, yeah. thanks for having me. I know we've been chatting about this for a while, so it's good to actually yeah. get it done. Yeah. Well, you know, um, everybody knows that everybody saw what you did last year and the year before. You know, I mean, you you've definitely had a good couple of years, and you definitely earned that seat uh, that you're on now. But I kind of want to talk about a little bit of your background, like. I mean, I don't really know much of your history beyond like the M4 600, like five or six years ago. Yeah, I mean, we'll be here all Where night. Where the hell I... did you come from, dude? <laughs> like... mean, we'll be here all night if I have to tell you everything we've been through. But uh, no, so, you know, my dad, he raced road racing. He had three brothers and they, they all raced around the world for a long time and um, at the highest level. So, turns out I was actually born in Spain while my dad was still riding and you know then we ended up going back to Zimbabwe which is where he was born and he broke his back um, when he was actually in Spain helping Kenny Roberts run the the flat track school over there so he uh, yeah after he broke his back you know all the traveling and the racing he was like I just want to go back home so yeah we went back to Zimbabwe and then we spent eight or nine years in Zim and and that's that's where I grew up kind of racing and I started racing dirt bikes at four years old um and honestly like all I ever wanted to do was race dirt bikes I didn't even want to see nothing to do with street bikes and I was pretty serious about it up until I was like 12 and then I had a pretty bad wrist injury um which put me out for almost a year and yeah, ever since then, my wrist kind of wasn't the same. So winning races and, and stuff like that on the dirt bike started becoming pretty tough. And then, and then one year I broke both my femurs and put me in a wheelchair for, for four months. I think you um, told me that last week. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was kind of the turning point where my mom was like, you need to find something else to do. And at that point I was racing supermoto and um, won a South African championship in supermoto. So yeah, at that point, my mom was like, listen, you got to find something else to do. So we made the, the change to, to road racing. And this was in South Africa. Uh, we were already living in South Africa at that point. Um, and honestly, the first time my dad, he came and picked me up from school and he had a road race bike, a little CBL 150 in the back. And he's like, hey, we're just going to go ride. We're going to go try it. And the whole time I was fighting him, I was like, I told you, I don't want to ride these things. And after the first day of riding it, we on the way home. He's like, what do you think? I was like, dad, I'm sorry. I'm never going to race road racing. It's just, it's not for me. I want to race street bikes. Um, you know, honestly, I was, I, I hated my first day on the bike. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> you wear the jumps, wear the ruts. That's and then, hilarious. The problem is though, you know, my dad, like my whole career, he's never been hard on me. He's never pushed me. It's always just, hey boy, go do your best. And if I try to do my best, he's stoked. So that whole first day, I mean, um, nobody told me where to ship. So I was shifting it like a dirt bike, just short shifting the thing. And there was kids blowing by me. I mean, like scraping the side of my bike, scaring the shit out of me. Um, so, yeah. I, and then I hit my head and a few more injuries and, and stuff like that happened. And then I had no choice to go to road racing. Um, and then in 2008, came to America for the Red Bull Rookies Cup tryouts. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so actually ended up being, I think, the second quickest guy there behind Josh Hook, the Australian Josh Hook, who races okay. in the, the uh, World Endurance Series now for Honda. Um, I got selected, and, yeah, we signed the contract. My dad sold his house, sold the car, everything. We were done. We were coming oh. to America to race. And they canceled the series in 2009, which kind of left us high and dry. Um, so that was a pretty big setback in my career. So stayed in South Africa, just did the road race thing, ended up winning uh, a South African championship in 2013. 
did one more year in 2014, but ended up hurting my knee. So I couldn't compete for the whole season. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the nice thing with the Red Bull Rookies Cup thing is it, it, it put us in contact with Danny Walker, right. who, who owned the, the Road Race Factory team at the time. So when my dad, he came back over in 2010 to be crew chief for Ben Bostrom, um, so my dad kind of did a little bit of networking and stuff when he was here to try get me over here. So, yeah, 2015, all of 2014, we we're talking to Danny, trying to make it work. And then 2015, we, you know, pulled the trigger and moved to America. And, and yeah, that, that was pretty much the start of it. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, so tw- 2016, you rode the GSXR 600. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't remember what you did in 17, but I, I do remember you spending a little bit of time on Danny's Honda for a minute, right? Yeah, so, so 2017 was probably the roughest year I've had. Um, that was the year where I, I kind of stopped racing. Um, you know, my dad and we were living on people's couches and out of a suitcase and stuff like that. So 2017, I made the decision to kind of just sit out and, and have my family kind of find their roots and find their feet here in America before we started doing it again. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, once again, Danny Walker actually was a Christmas gift at the end of 2017. Oh, I opened really? it up and it was, a, it was a contract from the road race. I mean, it was the Broster Honda, Broster Chicken Honda at that, at that point. So, um, yeah, actually that was kind of, revived my my career a little bit there yeah i remember you guys uh i I remember you guys in 2018 um you know i've been part of the attack program for a long time and uh, you know that year um heron was there uh and i know he did the race team we did uh superbike races and then also world superbike and you guys were there as well and i was like man who the hell is this cam peterson kid (laughs) right and, and like I remember, you had like a you had like a foot injury or something crazy. Yeah, uh, it was at Sonoma. I actually yeah, yeah I tucked front going through one of the corners and it popped my legs off and uh, my foot got sucked into the back wheel and the the chain just kind of cut through my boots and tore all the tendons in my foot and yeah, you know, that was that was not a nice one. Well, it's a it's a good thing you had uh, really good working electronics on that bike, right? <laughs> yeah electronics was great i loved it that yeah <laughs> yeah i bet i bet yeah I, re- I remember all the all the electronic gremlins that you guys had and it was that was tough that was tough it, i mean you it, it was a tough year but you know i i can't say anything bad about ken chewy and that whole omega team because that was a guy who just had a passion for racing everything was coming out of his own pocket you know and and yeah, yeah there, were, there were times where when the bike ran properly. Oh, on the Honda? On, on, the, on the Yamaha in 2002. Yamaha after that, yeah. That was a tough, yeah. that was even tougher. That, right? that, was, that was tough. That was tough. I mean, yeah. And the, yeah, again, on the Honda in 2018, unfortunately, that was the, the first year the team had gone to full Magneti Morelli. Yeah. Um, and you know how many different maps and how many different programs they are in the Magneti Morelli. So yeah. it took us like two or three races that year in 2018 to realize like all the underlying maps that when I was at 100% throttle, no matter what Scotty changed, no matter what he did, there was an underlying map that would revert back to only give me 80% throttle. So, you know, for the first two races, I was cruising around and they had this badass motor. The bike was had stepped up massively from 2017 had a full world tour bike Honda motor in the thing. And we showed up to Coda at the first test and it was like 12 mile an hour slower than the, the bike the previous year. So yeah, it, it got, it got off to a rough start in 2018, but honestly towards the end of the year, it's a pity Honda went away with that program because towards the end of the year, we actually started getting that bike to, to do some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like you guys were making progress there. And then, like you said, it just kind of went away. And then you end up on that other thing. So, yeah, it right. looked cool. I, I will say that. It looked cool. Yeah. And like I said, when the thing ran properly, it 
it was it was a pretty decent motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah, that but, Yamaha, that, was it uh, Omega, right? Omega? It was a, yeah, it was Omega. Yeah. It was yeah, Omega. Yeah, it looked cool, but man, yeah. it just, it looked like you were having a hard time. There was a couple of times where you would get a sniff at the front. And it was like, oh, shit, Ken P's coming yeah. in. You know, well, obviously, something. I think the only time I got a sniff at the front was Alabama, the, the last yeah. race of the season where I was running. Yeah. Like, but with, I mean, Cam and Gerloff had gone at that race, but the rest of us were battling for a podium. Right. So, I mean, that, Honestly, that was the first time, which is funny, was on the mega bike where I actually ran at the front of a, a super bike race. Yeah, that's um, – and then – so what the hell happened? You know, I, I talked to John, and um, I'll just say it straight up. He called like an hour ago, right? <laughs> and um, he told me this really interesting story about um, the end of that year and, you know, just chance um, – chris ran into your dad at supercross and it was like your dad was like yeah we're done racing we're broke you know so like that was at the end of 19 right it was uh, so by the time supercross we were already in 2020 it was january 10 or something like that yeah i think it was san diego supercross or one of the anaheims or something like that yeah Um, so you were like out of racing bye we're done and then all of a sudden you have this like your your uh your dad has this chance meeting in this dance with chris ulrich like i i'm right like what the chances of my dad sitting around in front of the oriches like right there and that that sparked up the conversation wow man wow no, that's wild. And, and that's how you ended up on that altus thing right yeah i mean so like you said my dad ended up sitting he just went to a seat and he looked back and, and John and Chris were sitting there. So they kind of got to talking. And like you said, my dad told them the story. Look, we're done. And uh, it was within 10, 15 minutes. Chris had phoned George Nassani and, and uh, kind of told my dad, he's like, listen, I think we've got something for Cam. You can maybe go ride the Altus bike. And yeah, one thing led to the next. And before you knew it, I was signed up and, had a pretty badass ride for 2020 so yeah i honestly the the oranges and and what they've done for me it's they've really given me the opportunity they really have you know every year same as 2016 because my year my first year here in america kind of the same deal you know first half of the season wasn't the greatest but then the second half of the season i was kind of running at the front with with Bobby and Heron and Gerloff, all those guys were in the 600 at that time. Um, so again, you know, they gave me the opportunity in 2016 to to go ride on a top notch team and, and show what I did. So I got a teammate with Valentin De Bees or something, right? Yeah, yeah, 2016. Oh, that. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. Oh, BD, he's he's. He's a good guy, BD. Really. Yeah, and and honestly, he he taught me so much because at that point, I was still pretty young and fresh faced, and and he had raced two fifty Grand Prix when it was still two fifty two strokes, and he raced Moto two oh, and had been in the Moto GP scene and on the World Championship scene for a long time. Um, so yeah, having BD as a teammate, he actually he taught me so much, which was so pretty. You've had, cool. uh... You had quite a few teammates, right? I mean, like, tell me a little bit about some of that. So, like, who's your who's your favorite teammate, and then who's your worst, least favorite teammate? <laughs> um, like, I used to ask this like back I, in the day. I, I, I'll, give I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I I asked this of Steve Rapp years ago, and um, Steve told me he's like, "Yeah, man, I always get the weirdos as teammates," and this is like twenty some years ago. So, like, whatever. It's it's i can talk shit like i don't care right, right. so so he's like yeah man he's like you know one year he was teammates with matt aladdin right like that that dude's got to be it's kind of a intense kind i of don't think he could have been an easy teammate yeah right and then he also had john kaczynski and i guess he said these stories about like john kaczynski wouldn't let his gloves touch each other and that kind of stuff like Oh, if no his way. blood just touched each other, that was it. You had to throw him in the trash and get new blood. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So <laughs> as much as much as Valentin helped me, he was probably the worst guy to have as a teammate. Like with Ryder yeah. Lounge and stuff, he 
I mean, the first day he walked in there and just claimed everything. He's like, this is my cupboard. This is my, and so at that point, there was like five or six of us getting ready in the riders lounge and he had just taken up everything and we were all trying to get dressed and would put his yoga mat down and do his warm up and just kind of took over, kind of took over the place and actually ended up like we had Caroline Olsen racing for, for the team at the time. Yeah. And, and really pretty much just told us straight up, your stuff can't be in here. You need to find somewhere else to get changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and then best teammate, I mean, I got to say it, it's, it's got to be my guy right now, Jake, yeah. you know, I, I, we spend so much time together and, and I know us going racing together, it's, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, I know that uh, I'm, I'm just probably talking out of turn, but I know that last year, you know, when there was a seat open, uh, Jake was like, yeah, uh, Cam P gets my vote. And Richard's like, dude, you don't get a vote. <laughs> you know and and you know that's ultimately yamaha's decision right so oh, right, right. um but it was kind of funny that little interaction and um and i was not surprised that you would say that because the way you guys interact on the race weekend it's it's pretty cool to yeah. see, yeah. you know no jake's jake's done, it. jake's done a lot for me but you know for for a lot of other teams like sometimes the riders input like that does make a difference you know like john and chris one of the first things they asked me were like how how are you and bobby with each other mm. and you know so i think for a lot of for a lot of teams like sometimes it does make a pretty big difference is is having two guys that enjoy being around each other and and are not scared to give out information and, and make the program better you know right right so you know, now that you're on the attack Yamaha, like, what do you think? I mean, you've had four days on the thing, so. I mean, honestly, you know how grateful I am to be in this position and, and to have this opportunity. But, yeah, I, <laughs> I remember the first session I, I came back into the pits. And, and honestly, I mean, like, the Suzuki did some stuff really good. But as an overall package, um, just everything with the team, the motorcycle. I came in and I, I've never ridden a motorcycle that accelerates and come out, comes out of a corner as good as that old one. They've done an unbelievable job with dialing in the electronics and the power and, and, and really making the most out of the exits of the corner, which is, it's awesome. It really is, you know. And then it just seems like the, within the team, everybody's got a really good dynamic with each other, which, again, it makes such a big difference, you know. Um, have, you, really, have you interacted? Have you interacted with a lot of the crew guys on the team, or just? I, I mean, I know you spend a lot of time behind the laptop with the genius, right? But like, do you do you spend much time talking with Will and Fernando and? I I I try to, you know. I I, I try to make yeah. time for for everybody in the team because, at least for me, having chemistry with everybody. I want to go to the racetrack in the morning and I want to go hang out with these guys, you know? So I really do try, try and make an effort to talk to everybody. And, but that's the thing, you know, everybody's so open. Everybody seems like everybody really does seem so nice and everybody's so open with each other. The chemistry just seems awesome. And, and again, you know, I mean, my last test on the first day was a little bit rough. Um, yeah. And, and ask you about that. yeah. And, and, but you know, like, John and John Cornwall, they, those guys, I guess they were kind of standing back in a distance and observing kind of how I was feeling and what I was going through after the crash. Yeah. And, and yeah, John, you know, he pulled me aside on both days and just gave me great advice. And, and once again, that's another nice thing. That team has so much experience, so much advice that you'd be stupid not to listen to, to anything they have to say. You know John's a legend, right? Oh, he's I mean, unreal. Like, he's unreal. You know, I mean, I know Richard's been uh, really good friends with John forever. I mean, as long as I've known Richard, he's like, oh yeah, corn dog this, corn dog that. I'm like, who the fuck is this corn dog guy? <laughs> right? But you know, corn dog's been part of the program for ever, for as long as I've known. And um, you know, obviously he's Jake's crew chief. But he's also, I think he does a lot of suspension work for both bikes, doesn't he? Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's a nice thing. It's like there, there is no real 
yeah, Jake has his guys. I have my guys. But when it comes down to it, it's all just one, hey, what's going to work best? Cam saying this. Like, yeah, it's, you get a bunch of ideas and you come up with the best one. And I think that's why the team is the way it is. It's yeah. so dumb it's because and of that whole dynamic they have. There's no egos. There's no guys trying to talk over each other. It's, it's a very wild oiled machine, I'll say that. Well, there's also not a – there's not like the wall – right? All the bikes are the same. You're getting the same equipment that Jake's getting, right? Like every, the, there's not like a special thing for Jake and then you get the leftovers, you know? Right. Like that's and you know, how it works. I, and I know I, I've seen all the comments and I see a lot of people say that, well, oh, they don't have the same equipment as Jake and he, he has to be on a different bike and it's just, it's not true. I mean, it's, it's bullshit. It's, it's bullshit. bullshit. I mean, at the end of the last test, I had the exact same bike as Jake. Yeah. You know, what goes into Jake's bike, if it works and if it's positive, it goes straight into my bike. So it's it's just such a nice dynamic and it's so refreshing to be in something like that. It, it kind of feels like you don't have to walk on eggshells everywhere and be careful what you say. And it's it's really refreshing. Well, I know, you know, I know that about your crash because I was, I saw it happen you know i was in the timing booth and i saw it and i was like oh my god you know i mean i i started taking off running before it stopped you know like it was still crashing it was like that scene on talladega nights right, right? it was, it was. It was a commercial <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. and um you know I, I i i went out there with my truck and um i mean you looked you looked pretty shaken i mean that was a big one and um you know, I, I did give you some shit. I see you're wearing your Alpine Stars hoodie. So, you know, I did give you some shit for not wearing your airbag. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and I know that, and, and, I did, and I did text Heath and I was like, dude, how come you didn't give this guy an airbag? What the hell? <laughs> right? So. No, um, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, I think that was all my fault. I'm, I'm pretty sure when I left a stars hq I, I i'm convinced i probably told Heath, no i'm good i've got an airbag and then you know i left to go to the test and i left it at home and ah, oh, it's just my own stupidity <laughs> well i told him i was like heath you know he's just a stupid racer you're supposed to give this right <laughs> yeah we yeah um no honestly that that the crash was a bummer um yeah and you know i i think me more than anybody i I just hate taking a squashed motorcycle back to the team. Um, yeah. You know, most of the time crashing and stuff doesn't really affect my confidence, but there's, there's no worse feeling than sliding on your back and just seeing a bike 20, 30 feet up in the air next to you and watching the thing squash the ground. Um, yeah, it was, was a big bum in it and it set us back. I mean, the whole, the whole rest of the day, we were just trying to catch up and um, you know, we had to jump onto the spare bike and, kind of there were a few things that we had to get dial, dialed in with that and we pretty much lost all of that first day kind of sort of you know well, i know that I, I know that you were kind of banged up but i know that basically to follow up on what you're just saying is that it's like you were less worried about yourself and more worried about what richard was gonna say and i was like <laughs> dude, don't even worry about that dude like just you know, put you in the truck. Let's go. And the first word Richard said is, "Hey, man, maybe you should go take a breather." You know? right. What? <laughs> like well, I, you I, thought he was gonna yell at you or something? Yeah. I don't know what your background is or what. I'm you're just not used about. to hearing that. You yeah. know, normally it's like, a, "Hey, you crash a bike, you crash another one, you're done." You know. Right. So, no, I mean, yeah, you know, the way the way Richard and the team handled that, it kind of gave me a sense of confidence as well. Um, but it's just a pity. I don't, I don't need to be doing stuff like that in the third yeah. session, my first day with test, you know. But uh, again, it's just kind of my past experiences of, of every time I jump on a bike, I'm fighting to put food on my plate the next day. So I'm not in that situation anymore. And I think I just need to go about this whole thing with a little bit of a different mindset and let the stuff come to me, you know, because, yeah, that crash, um, it kind of was just all overconfidence. Um was feeling good the first two sessions was was pretty close to jake but obviously it was a brand new track and and y'all went into the third session and i was like well feeling good watch this you know and and yeah. it, it bit me and um yeah i mean honestly like my knee is still pretty damn swollen and 
can't really walk around, get around too good. But um, yeah, I, I held on to that bike for dear life. I didn't want it, <laughs> I didn't want it to go tumbling down the road. And unfortunately, the thing actually took its first bounce on my legs, which which wasn't ideal. That's that's definitely not ideal. <laughs> you know, I mean, I I think that um, what you're saying, and maybe people don't realize this, but I mean, you know, I I told you this earlier. I mean, you're definitely, and I told my wife too. I mean, you're you're definitely like that working class racer, like you most people don't realize that you're not, you, you weren't making a living racing. Like you were racing for free, hoping it would work out. And, um, you know, like you said, everything you did, it was like, okay, well, if I, if I fall down this race, I'm not going to eat until the next round. Like, <laughs> well, the problem is if I don't get a podium, I'm not going to eat either. You know? so it's, right. like, it's this balancing act. Of, it, it, it's been tough. It, it really has been tough. And, that's why I'm just, I'm so grateful to be in this position. I mean, yeah, I, I really am. It's, it's a life changer. Yeah. So you guys, um, tell me a little bit about working with, with the, the genius over there, the super bike genius. It's, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. My driving to the first test and I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I was so anxious because before this, I've, I've spoke to Richard a couple of times and, I don't know. He's he's a, he's an intimidating guy. He comes across, you know, the way he carries himself and <laughs> the, the way he's the same thing. Yeah, he, he's a very intimidating guy, you know. But once you get to know him, he's, I mean, he really is. He's a gem. He's such a good guy. Um, everybody knows what he's done in the past and and the stuff that he's capable with doing with motorcycles is next to none. He really is. He, like you said, he is. He's a genius. He's so good at what he does. So. When, when this whole deal came about and they said, well, so it looks like Richard's going to be a crew chief, I was so stoked, so happy knowing that I was going to get the best guy in my corner. Um, okay. Yeah, working with him and getting to know him and and he's just such an awesome guy and, and he's he's pretty, he, at the same time, he's pretty open-minded, you know, it's, it's not just his way or the highway, he's he's really open, open-minded about things. And, um, I, I think just, I'm so stoked. I really am. I, I mean, I don't think I could have anybody better in my corner helping me adjust to the Yamaha and, and helping me understand why and how we do things and, and, and all of that, all of the above, you know? So, um, yeah, he has, yeah. A, it seems like he's got this understanding of the, of the subject matter. He's got there, um, uh, Ken Hill used to tell me this, okay? Like, um, if you understand a subject, you can explain it in a way that your mom can understand. Yep. Dude, like, he, he like, I'm, I'm basically a retard, right? Like, and he <laughs> explains the thing to where it's like, oh yeah, I get that, right? I mean, how, how does he have the time to, to be able to do that? I, I, I think he's just so put together. Honestly, I mean, the guy is, he is, he's a genius, you know, and that's why he's so successful with what he's done. He's, I think, I think he's just, he's got that knack to be able to do that. Right. And it's, it's awesome. It really is. And then, you know, having Fernando, Will and Lee, I mean, the nice thing is I worked with Lee. Well, I didn't work with him. He, he was uh, Valentin's crew chief in 16. So uh, we worked under the same team for a whole year and kind of got to know Lee really well. So um, the nice, yeah, that was a nice thing. Don't get about old hot rods. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he a fan of hot rods? Oh dude, he's, he's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah the, at the last test, he was showing me like this weird square body that he threw an air, S, uh, LLS engine into. We need to get him and my dad talking. No, oh, talk. My dad's the same. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, that that was cool like i didn't didn't take too much to to get used to those guys and you know we we've spent time together in the past so with lee and Will, it was pretty easy going getting getting to the team and and hitting it off with those guys right right so um tell me a little bit about this like team man bun thing that you and jake got going on <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I've just been so broke up until now that I haven't been able to get one. No, I, I've, uh, 
I've wanted long hair my whole life and my dad's really old school, really yeah. old school. Like it's, it's been military cut for a long time. So yeah, I had the opportunity to grow my hair out. I was like, why not? Let's just see. So it hasn't quite got to the point yet right now where it's, it's irritating me. So, but we might have to make it a thing. We might have to I, make it a thing. It might have to make it a thing, but I, I have something that maybe you should like do something with Jake and like, like, look, Jake, if I beat you. Who's cutting, the, who's cutting their hair first? <laughs> We're going to have to just make it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we, could, we, could get, uh, we could get Jake's dad to give us one of those pit bull things. And, <laughs> right? And nice and clean. Hilarious. Nice and clean. That would be funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Jake would go down for that kind of scumbaggery. I, I, I don't think Jake's cutting that hair anytime soon. <laughs> no. No, it's working for him. It's working for him. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Well, so um, that's it. I'm, just, I'm trying to do whatever Jake's doing. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you know, I, I will tell you this. At the test, you know, for those that don't realize, you guys were testing on config 26 at Button Willow, which is counterclockwise. So you're going through the S's into the star Mazda corner, and then you take the drag strip into Riverside. Richard said that you guys were 190 miles an hour down that drag strip. 190? Yep. I was kind of wondering myself. Because yeah. yeah, at the end, of, it took me two laps to hold a pin down that straightaway with all the jumps and bumps in there. It like it took jumps me a and bumps. <laughs> it, it, it literally took me like a good two laps. The first lap I went down there, I hit that that big one. Yeah, and I mean, I <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> you know, he said that he said that you hit uh, you hit one of the bumps at, at 170 miles an hour. Yeah, I I, so, I can try. I, it felt like it. <laughs> it was just, I, that one big bump. There was a few times I was like, the bikes, if we had wings on these things, they'll take off. Yeah, you guys were cooking. It was impressive to watch. And then and then also um, somebody asked what turn that you crashed in. And um, that was the exit of the bus stop. Right? Uh, uh, yes. So going config 26 would be going into the bus stop pretty much. After the long lift. Oh, that oh yeah, you right. cut the front on the entry to the bus stop and then. Um, yeah, on the, on the entry. Yep. The acrobatics. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. yeah just try, yeah. To, try to hang on to the bike so it won't go tumbling. And then the curb, the curb kind of rises and then the track on the other side goes down. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure what speed we were doing at that point, but I tried to hold on to the bike and got it off the edge of the curb and got air time and at that point i was like oh, i think it's time to let go but it was too late you know we did we did look at your data last night a little bit and um yeah it was like um what did he say it was like you were um three or four pounds three or four more pounds of pressure on the front brake mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah like i said that's that overconfidence of watch out here i come you know and just not yeah. really knowing yeah, at that test, you know, I got to say, man, um, you and uh, Matt Skoltz were pretty close there right at the end. I mean, you were, I think you did a 141.4, I think. and 141.2. We both did 41.2s. Uh, oh, you, that's right. That's yeah, right. so he, I, I mean, it was pretty much the same lap time. But, yeah. you know, Maddie, Maddie also had a little bit of gearbox problems towards the end of the day there, so. Yeah, I don't, think he, I don't think he got a fair shot at a, a soft I was, time. I, I watched Matty um, pop out of gear a couple times going into the off ramp corner, um, and uh, I was like, "Man, that sounds weird." And it's like clank, 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 and then he would grab it back into gear and keep going. But eventually, he just was like, "You know, something's not right." Next time, right. when I went back into the garage, they had an engine out of the bike, so I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. that's unfortunate." Um, that's only that's the only that's only shitty part with with you know using first gear is is the possibility of finding those neutrals because yeah that could that could ruin your race right there. But is that is that let me ask you something because like you know I run first gear because I'm part of the, the attack mafia right the attack R1 mafia and uh, you know when I tell people I go down to first gear they're like you go down to first gear nobody goes down to first gear I'm like I don't know what Richard said and I'm kind of doing what that guy said you know. 
So tell me, what do you think about that? Like, I know Richard runs kind of that longer gearing and that utilizes the first gear in the gearbox. What do you think? I love it. I, I really do. Um, and I think that's, that's been one of their biggest advantages is being able to use the first gear because they've got it working so good in first gear. And, and I think that's one of the biggest issues for a lot of people is to actually get the bike to work in first gear, have it feel they, the way they want to with engine brake and, and the acceleration. But they've done such a good job. That first gear is so usable. I mean, I've never in a motorcycle that on the config that we were doing, we we're going into turn one into first gear. I mean, and at the apex, you could pretty much crack 60 to 80% thr throttle and then just straight to 100% and it just fires out of the corner and minimal wheelie, minimal movements. It's, it's a game changer. And uh, yeah, I think, I think being able to use first gear helps out a lot, a lot. Yeah, you guys definitely are getting the jump off the corner. And I will tell you this, like I, I told Richard last night when you guys were ripping through the S's there, the bikes are the bikes make such a unique sound that literally like the pictures in the track office were shaking. And <laughs> Terry, Terry, the, the track manager, got up and was looking out the window, like, what the hell is going on out there? I, I mean, <laughs> it's like that for me, honestly, when after my little crash and I, I took a session off to kind of see how my knees were and all of that. I went and watched through the, through the S's and I was blown away. I was like, wait, we, we do that. You know, it's honestly, like you said, it was one of the craziest things I watched and the way the bike sounded going through there, watching Maddie and Jake go through there was one of the best things I think I've ever watched personally, seriously. I, I just got a text from the painter that paints our bikes. And he says, I'm sorry. Like, I'm Matt. sorry. <laughs> he said, sorry, Matt. <laughs> hey, I'm just giving you work. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. I, I mean, I know that I think Matt was at the shop today, I think to pick up body work. So you guys can have something for the test next week. Um, but uh, anyway, that random random thoughts <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um john mccallan says the shift drums in world superbike put the neutral all the way down so you can use first without having to go past neutral that sound that I, I think yeah i think i think some some people do do that um i'm just not sure with the homologation rules and and opening up gearboxes here in america i'm not sure what the deal is um, yeah. I'm not sure if you can really mess around with the internals here I in America. I think, I'm, I'm, the, I think here in the States, you kind of got to run the stock trans, right? I unfortunately, like I'm not hundred percent sure on the, on the technical side of that, but I think there might be something to do with not being able to go inside internally and, and mess around with the gears. I, I mean, honestly, those engines, uh, Richard and I have spoken about this at length. The engines that you guys are running are, are literally stock engines. Everything below the head gasket is a stock I, engine, except for the clutch. You I know. I, I heard him say that to somebody when we were leaving the last test, you know, a guy, because they had a track day. I think, yeah, they had track days the next day. And um, so so this guy, Arthur, walked over and was just kind of asking questions, trying to – and, yeah, you know, when, when Richard told him, he was like, yeah, for the second half of the year, everything was pretty much stuck. The guy was blown away. He was blown away. Most people don't believe it. The bikes, the bikes come out so good out of the crate. I mean, horsepower wise that, yeah, you can't use all that power. So sometimes, sometimes taking, making the bike easier to ride a little bit smoother adds to lap time. Yeah. I mean, working with your, with your guy, Will last week, and I, I hired him to be my race mechanic for the week. Oh, right on. Yeah. Actually, yeah, he mentioned me. He mentioned that to me. Yeah. So Will um, working with me, and you know, I've got just the kid electronic stuff, and it, literally, dude, we sat there and took power out of it, like a lot of power. It was like I'm like, dude, that's like the rain mode. He's like, yeah, let's do that, and I went faster. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Sometimes it, 
Isn't that ridiculous? Have, they spend all this money to have a fast engine, and then you all you do is use the electronics to dump it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah, I'm basically that. riding a 750 right now. <laughs> yeah, right. right? Right. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's weird how it works, but yeah, obviously, if you can't put the power to the ground, then you're not going to be going forward. So um, there's a guy saying that having first as a bottom sounds like a way bigger risk than having it between first and second. That seems weird. It, I think it would just be weird. Yeah, you know, like I think for some people, but most of the tracks that we go to, it's we know our gear, we know our shift points, you know, like I know I only go down three gears into certain corners, four gears into, so like, like I'll never go down five gears knowing that neutral's all the way at the bottom. If, if you know what I'm saying, like, like we have our shift points, we know exactly where to shift and, um, so yeah, for some people that might forget um, in fourth and I go down three gears into this corner, then, then yeah, it could be a problem. But um, it's, I feel like if you are going to be using first a lot, it, it might be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, if you could get away with that in your rules. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? So, <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to talk smack a little bit too. I, you know, I... I was there at your first test and I saw you at your first test go about two seconds faster than you went last year when we were there on the other thing you were riding. Your first time out on the bike, you went two seconds quicker. Yeah, I is think- that when uh, you knew, you were like, yeah, dude, <laughs> this is it. No, hey, honestly, at the end of that first test, I, it's the fastest I've ever gone around Button Willow, so. You know, a second day on the bike just shows how good of a job they've done. But I don't think it's too fair because that that when we were there in October last year, it had rained the week before and there was like actual dirt in some of the inside of the corners where you couldn't get to the apex and you know some weird stuff like that. But yes, it 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 came to me a lot easier. I'll say that. Right. Well, also you did kind of wear yourself out if I recall correctly. You had. Yeah. I, I mean, like 8,000 laps or something the day before <laughs> at a different track, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was, when we were there back in October, I had, I had done so many laps, but same thing, we test back to back. One day was at Chuck Waller, next was at Button Waller, so waking up early in the morning to drive three hours to Chuck Waller doing, I don't even know how many laps. I mean, it was an open track, so it was just like in, out, in, out the whole day drive another three hours home, wake up early in the morning, drive to Button Willow. I was smoked that day. I was smoked. I mean, at the end of the day, like, because we were, we were testing a bunch of swing arms and everything. And at the, at the end of the day, they're like, oh, I can Let's go give us a couple more laps. And I was like, I, I don't know if I can do it. I like, I'll give you two laps, but at the, after two laps, I'm smoked. Um, but yeah, I mean, all things aside, the Yamaha is unreal. I absolutely love that thing. And Richard and, and the team have, they've done an unbelievable job at, at making that thing a weapon. Yeah, I was, uh, I was texting the local fast guy while on, on the second day. Uh, I don't know, do you know Bryce Prince? Yeah, I know Bryce pretty well. Yeah, so Bryce Prince, you know, the, the, the new race club I'm involved in, uh, the CRA, we raced on that config last year. Oh, nice. I, I wasn't there, so I, I didn't recall. I was out sick that weekend, so I didn't recall what the lap times were. So I, I texted Bryce and I was like, hey, man, like, how fast did you go on Config 26? And he was like, he said he thought he remembered, you know, his best on that Config was a 43 or 44. So I sent him a screenshot of your guys' times and he's just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Again, I, I think when jumping from a stock bike to a super bike, I think I think there's a second, second and a half just in that, you know, and then right. with everything else going on, especially being on that bike. And and it just shows in Maddie as well, because obviously the Westby guys get a lot of help from from Richard and Attack and and it just shows that even Matthew's package, the bikes are unreal and it allows us to do stuff like that. It really does. They're so confidence inspiring way of like I said, the first year stuff, knowing in my mind and testing it that you can crack the throttle open 
to that percentage at max lean angle is mind blowing. And obviously on a stock bike, you can't get away with stuff like that. So yeah, we went fast, but I know Bryce is legit. And, and I think if you put him on a super bike, it, I, I think you'll get kind of close. I think he, he said, he said there's, he said he would, uh, he would get quicker obviously, but he said, there's no way he would touch a 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't touched the 40 yet either. So <laughs> yeah. nobody else has. Like uh, honestly, uh, the only other guy I've seen go that fast was uh, the other cam. No, nah, that, that's so. why I say. I mean, Jake's Jake's special. He's special at the moment. I I, I invite bring anybody, bring anybody, whoever it is, whatever series they're running. Bring him, and they're going to struggle to beat Jack. I promise you that. Promise you. Well, I guess we're going to find out, right? You guys have a new uh, competitor coming, uh, red shirt, yep. right? Uh, yep. We got one of those European dudes on the Ducati coming out and uh, trying to bring it, right? With yeah. a full effort, too. No, I, I tell you what, Petrucci and, and the, the Warhorse guys, they're going to be a problem, plain and simple. I mean, Petrucci is a top 10 MotoGP guy now recently you know so right. he's, he's no joke and and I, I do think he's I rate him more than Baz um you know so yeah I think he might put up a little bit more of a fight than what Baz did um but having said that I already know that our pace is going to be faster than last year as well and Jake's right. proving it at the test already you know he's he's going faster than he ever has so yeah I think the, the pace once again is going to be raised to another level so it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. What do you think of, uh, what do you think of the writers on your former team? You know, I mean, Richie Escalante, like I, I'm excited about that. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm so Obviously stoked. Jake, Jake Lewis too. You know, yeah. Good dude. Yeah. He was at our track day Friday last week and um, we got to hang out a little bit and talk and, you know, it's good to see him back on a super bike. Uh, but Richie Escalante, man, that dude's been in the trenches for a long time and, yeah, kind of, kind of the kind of the same story, you know, just never wanting to to leave his face out of the paddock because you get forgotten about so quickly, and so that's why sometimes you do you sign deals and take these rides that might end up actually hurting you at the end of the year. But it's it's something you have to do. You just you have to be in the paddock. You have to have your face out there, otherwise you get forgotten about. So you know, I'm I'm super stoked for Richie. He deserves it 110. percent uh, I don't think there's really anybody else who deserves it more than he does. And then obviously we all know the caliber rider Jake is. Um, and once again, he had that opportunity taken away from him years back. So, right. So he, he deserves it. He deserves I it. I don't remember the, the specifics of it, but it was something to do like he, he hurt he, himself. He, he, hurt his, he broke his collarbone or did something to his shoulder. So they had Tony come replace replace him and then Tony ended up winning the first two races or something like that and we're like well I guess we're going to keep Tony um so yeah Jake 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 got the short end of the stick there so to see Jake back on a on a team and a super bike is I'm I'm so happy for him he deserved yeah, it and and he took the same a similar path that you did like yeah you know he yep. stocked yep. up the thing with all these guys and then like John's got a little factory thing going there where he like churns him out. Guy, it's just right. a little, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's actually pretty cool how that 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 works out. And um, yeah, doing the stock thing, even for Jake, you know, it's it it's a career changer. Like look look where look where it got us. So yeah, yeah thanks I know, to I, I know when you. Were- when you were on the Altus bike, I know, I know you, I'm really good friends with your crew chief from that year. You're a, a very colorful yeah. personality <laughs> of, uh, yeah. of Melissa Perez. Oh, Melly. Like, how, how was that? How, I mean, how was working with Melly as a crew chief? Honestly, like, one of the best years I've had racing ever was working with Melly. She's, her determination and, and willingness to, to get better every race is it's second to none. And honestly, there, there were some times where we didn't maybe have some spares and everything. And Melissa just wouldn't take no for an answer. She's so feisty, you know, she, and she would make sure that I had everything I needed that whole year, Um, Mm -hmm. you know? So, so that, that was really nice knowing that I had somebody in my corner that was going to fight for me every second of the way, no matter what. And 
um yeah we had fun that year it was it was it was a really fun year of racing yeah she's um she's a character man like she's she's really funny i mean she's, she, she is. She's, she's awesome also really she's really determined to to try and win like that's so determined and yeah. and not only that you know with with mally there was there was never ever an, an ego if she didn't know how to do something she was okay to go ask somebody for help right. um and i think that's why she's so good now today is because of her willingness and like you said the determination to win and get better is yeah. second to none I think this year she's working with that Corey Ventura kid on the yep. R7. So, yep. Yeah, yeah I, think that's, I think that's going to be a good program. And, and Corey's, Corey's a legit racer, so I think it's going to be interesting. All right, well, let me ask you this. Yeah, I know we're testing next week. Yep. Right? I'll be there. I'm running your times again because I'm Richard's, like, timing bitch. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys – from what I understand, you guys are gonna ride some R sixes that day, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We back back onto some six hundreds. Um, looks like looks like we're gonna go race Daytona, which is honestly something that's been on my bucket list. I've wanted to do it for as long as I can remember. So, um, when was the last time you rode a six hundred again? Um, sixteen. I rode. I, no, I actually I rode a. I rode Josh and Melissa 600 in 2019 at Road America for, for like five laps, five or six laps. So, um, but that was after our race weekend and I was on the mega bike and so raced the whole weekend on a thousand and then they had the test on the Monday and I jumped on the 600 and I literally rode out the pits and got on the gas and fought like a junior cup bike. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think it's going to take some getting used to, you know, getting used to that that roll speed and, and the kind of lean angle and, and how aggressive you are on the gas. It's going to take some getting used to, but I'm excited. I'm so excited to do Daytona. I think it's something I've always wanted to do. And I know Richard's, yeah. we're going there to win. We're going to yeah, go there. Oh, dude, oh, that's, that's, Richard doesn't do anything but no, I, I know, like, I know. So. He's a gigantic winning machine guy, like. He was so excited uh, when when he pulled this stuff out of mothballs. You know, he's got all the quick change stuff. It's all he's had it forever. He's like, yeah. uh, and, you know, I told him last night. I was like, okay, today on the episode of Hoarders, <laughs> right? And I mean, it's like, you know, he's got the same booms and everything, all this quick change stuff. Like, and I know that the boys have been over there. I've been staying out of the shop because I know that they're on fire for the Daytona stuff, but. They, um, I know last time I was over there, they were working on the quick change stuff. They were making quick change stuff for the R6. And man, I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. I know he, he uh, before I actually signed the contract and everything, um, Jake took me to, to the shop um, just to kind of like actually meet Richard officially and, and chat. And yeah, he was, he was showing us some of his old Daytona stuff and um it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool yeah I mean did you I don't know if you saw the R7s and stuff that he's got sitting in there but I mean it's like man it's like dude I, you almost want to go in there and like make him re restore this <laughs> and it would take him so much time and money that he's already spending on trying to win that it's just not worth it you know yeah yeah exactly um but he's got some really stuff really trick stuff in there that I, I mean i don't know did you look at the gp bike right when you walk in i mean so i mean like that's the thing i'd actually like to go back and and spend some time and irritate him a little bit and have him show me some of the cool stuff because <laughs> I, <mean, laughs> I know i know he's got some really cool stuff there and i looked at the gp bike just for a little second but yeah i'd, I'd actually like to go back and have him show me around a little bit yeah dude he's that gp bike he, he 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 made himself and he didn't he worked you know what he worked like 30 hours a day right uh like he does like and, he does uh, yes you know he legit built a frame out of and, 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 and they went over there and didn't embarrass themselves either no no <laughs> i mean dude i think rapper scored 
he scored a MotoGP points. Exactly. So, I mean, this, exactly. For something that a single guy built in Huntington Beach by himself with a welder and a built and a machine shop, you know, to go and build something that a score MotoGP points like that's it's unheard of. Legend. Like right? you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't see that ever. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty so, pretty natural. So going back to Daytona, so you're gonna ride a 600 again, and you're yep. gonna for 200 miles. Yeah. Yeah. So you, 200 miles. So what, what's your uh, what's your training regimen for that? I you think know, some guys play tennis, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, no, I think I think just trying to be as light as possible. Um, honestly, I think at the moment, like my cardio base and everything's pretty good. And Daytona is not going to be very physical with the bank and only having so many corners. Um, so I think it's just going to be about trying to shed some weight now and see how light I can get. I don't know how you could shed any weight, dude. You already look like you got a tapeworm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I've got. I could probably lose another four or five pounds, which I think. I which I think only will between your ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, maybe the hair might add a couple. So we'll see. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so I guess I guess that weekend I'm I guess I'm gonna be like the fire extinguisher bitch or whatever. I don't know, but like whatever. I I, I just try to help the team out. So, you know, I'm gonna go there. Richard's that effort, that's all on him. That's, right. that's not yep. Yep. that's not the Yamaha program. That's literally like Richard and Walker and the boys in the in the shop building these bikes for Daytona. So um, you know, every little every little bit helps. So, 100 percent that's why you can say you might you might be coming there to do five thing but that stuff goes a long yeah. way it's yeah huge. so i i think it's going to be fun too i mean when was the last time there was like a legit pro race for the daytona 200 i mean this i think it's moto america's first try right yeah yeah it's their first, it's their first try um and from what i hear i think it's going to be pretty stacked I think there's going to be a lot of guys there, you know, yeah. ready to race. I, I know. Um, Josh Hayes is going to do it. Yeah, you know, Hayes, uh, all, all the guys. I mean, you know, yeah. those guys are, are fast as hell and, and they've done it before. Slick knows what to do and to, to win. Um, yeah. And then I know, I mean, I, I know, I don't know if it's confirmed and if he is coming, but Clinton Seller, the South African Superbike champ, oh. that, guy, that guy is legit as it gets, you know, so I think, I know he was trying to come out and, and do it as well. So I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be stacked. I want your thoughts on the the new super sport rules. Because, like, you're going to have you know, a, race I, a leader bike, yeah. right? And, yeah. and the, I, I, love the, I love the fact that they're bringing more manufacturers into it. And, and I think they can get it to work. Um, but I think it's going to be – it's going to take some trial and error because – from what I've heard is they've added five kgs or something like that to that Ducati, which is not going to do a single thing. Um, right. From what I've heard, I, and I know that, you know, I, I dealt with it in 2020 where, when PJ was on the Ducati. I mean, the thing came under minimum weight and then they only added a certain amount of weight on it. So I was like, at that point, he was still lighter than us. Um, right. Well, it's, so, not yeah. the same. it's not like the v it's not like you're racing a 600 against a v4r right, it's the v right. Twin. i think it's a 955 v twin so but that, that i think i think it's just going to take some some getting like i think the guys are just going to have to watch the times watch the watch the speeds and and kind of see what happens because if that ducati and the triumph have that much more top speed and acceleration and stuff then yeah they might have to look at, at doing something else they can't just add weight you know um, cause these guys also, a lot of these guys are so clever that they know where to add weight to make the bike actually maybe better. So sometimes, it's, <laughs> you know, so sometimes it's even an advantage, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I, I love the fact that there's more manufacturers in it. I mean, I won my first national championship on an MV Augusta six, seven, five triple. So I love the fact that they're bringing more manufacturers back into it. And, um, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to take some time, but I think it's going to work. It's going to be good. Right on, man. 
Well, you know what? I, I wish you the best of luck at Daytona. And I, I guess I'll see you next week at the test. Yeah, man. yeah we'll uh, see you. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, I know Richard gave me shit about it last night, but um, I think you guys are on that same config 26 thing again. So, um, and I think it's because you guys got to get ready for Daytona and that's a good fast. Long straight away. Yeah, yeah. good test the top speed and everything. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not complaining because honestly, I, I really enjoyed riding the track backwards. Yeah, yeah, something different. It was pretty cool. And like that whole first S section actually was kind of scary, to be honest, you know. And it like, like to me, that's fun. Like having stuff like that, that's challenging and going into that first ride at the S, every lap I was like, oh, here we go. So uh, yeah, I, I'm not complaining. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. It's just, uh, you know, it's like uh, just getting used to something different. I, I was commenting last night about how you got – how how you guys learn a track and uh, how quickly you guys get up to pace, you know, I mean, you know, five or six laps and you guys were under the lap record. I mean, that's pretty crazy, you know? Yeah. I, and again, I think the more new tracks you get exposed to, you know, for like me racing South Africa and America and going to all these new different tracks, I think it kind of allows you to, to get into that mindset and, and just know, um so yeah and obviously jake's the same maddie's the same so those guys that have that kind of experience i think it's a little bit easier um yeah and not to mention i mean when you're on bikes that give you that much confidence it's 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 a little bit easier you know yeah it's gonna be weird uh maybe well maybe it's not gonna matter as much because the bike doesn't make 200 horsepower or whatever but you know, it's going to be weird riding a bike without all the nanny stuff, right? Right. It's, I know, it's going to take some getting used to. I'm going to be waiting to hear all the snapple cracks and pops and farting noises, and it's not going to be there. He said <laughs> <the> farting noises. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the bikes sound like on the it electronics. Does. It does. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I think we're going to end this. Uh, appreciate you right chatting with me, dude, and uh, welcome to the team. And I guess I'll see you next week at the test. And you know, everybody needs to root for this guy at Daytona and the rest of the season. Let's see if we can, we can get him to scumbag Jake into doing like a <laughs> team man bun bet where like if you beat Jake, he'll shave Jake's head. Come we're going to have to do it. something. We're going to have to figure something out with the head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. And then no, no, right on probably Dustin, watching this too. Like, come on, Mark, get the pit bull out. Let's do it. <laughs> Anyway, no, but right on, Dustin. Thanks, thanks for having me, and yeah, honestly, man. thanks, thanks for everything you do with the team and and all the support and help. It it goes a long way, and stoked to be working with you guys. Yeah, man. All right, well, get her done, dude. Like, go fast, take chances, all that. That's Don't the plan. Let's go. Bikes, like, that's, <laughs> <you know? laughs> no, no more, no more, no more bikes down the road. We just we're gonna make it happen. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, dude. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you next week. Right on. Sounds good.